beside the clouds be rolled back as a scroll the trump shall resound and the lord shall descend even so it is well with my What a beautiful sight. Amen? Amen. Seven months. <laughs> Seven months since we've worshipped in this building as a congregation. This is now a time to lift up praise uh, to our Lord, our God. Come on, let's give him a clap for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. It feels so good, doesn't it? We got the windows open to create a little extra circulation so that but we don't create the, uh, the saturation that, that can make us more susceptible to COVID. Uh, we ask you, do you keep your mask on uh, throughout the service? If you feel uncomfortable at any time, you can lower it for one or two minutes, get your breath, get comfortable, and then raise it again. So that's perfectly okay if you feel you need to take it down for a couple of minutes. Uh, we'll offer, give you opportunities to stand and sing. You can sing, but the mask need to remain on. And, uh, and we're all going to love each other and take care of each other in these ways. Amen? Amen. Amen. I had to remember how to do sanctuary again. We almost forgot to light the candles. So we got that taken care of. The Spirit reminded us. Let us pray, shall we? Amen. Lord God, we thank you. And we praise you, Lord God. You are such a good, good God. You have not left us forsaken or forgotten, Lord God. Even, even when the, the pandemic hit, Lord God, and we had to shelter in place for five weeks, it was only... The sixth week, Lord, we are already out in the parking lot, gathering in our cars and praising you, Lord. And we got to move inside, and we praised you for that. And when they wouldn't let us be there, Lord God, we didn't stop. We went on the patio to praise you, Lord, because we love you that much. And, Lord, we're so grateful to be back inside, in the sanctuary, in the grounds that you have sanctified for your holy name. Lord, we gather in your place to glorify you so that others, Lord, will know you and encounter you. Even now, in this hour, Lord, we expect to encounter you, your Holy Spirit, your presence, your power, your supernatural grace, and your signs and your wonders, Lord. Even let your signs and wonders be revealed in this hour, we pray. So, Lord, I pray that for each person here today, each person who's going to be watching online, Lord, that the Holy Spirit's works in their life, convicting their spirit of what you prepare for each person this day, in this hour, as they listen and hear, Lord God, what you want them to hear. We thank you, Lord, for this, and we praise you for this as we submit ourselves to your grace, to your sanctifying grace in us and through us. And for these things, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, and all the people said, Amen. 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 Good morning. The announcements this morning, uh, there, on October 6th, there's an outreach and mission uh, meeting at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And on October 13th, there's a church council ministry meeting at 7 p.m. on Zoom. October 22nd, there is a Christian education discipleship team meeting. And then on October 27th, we have a Board of Trustee uh, Ministry meeting at 7 p.m. on Zoom as well. And I do have an update on meetings. Okay. So we were having our finance meeting this week, and it always happens this way. Somebody speaks up. It happened the same way with outdoor Bible studies. Somebody said, why can't we do outdoor Bible studies? I said, we can. We just have to want to. <laughs> then we wanted to, and we are. So praise the Lord. And then... Somebody said, why can't we meet in person for our meetings? And I said, we can. We do have to wear a mask and follow the guidelines. So, beginning this week, for those who want to gather for the Outreach and Missions Ministry team in person, we will meet in the conferencing room in the education building, and we will check temperatures, and, and we will make sure you have sanitized your hands, and we'll wear our mask, and we'll meet. And if you're not ready to do that, because we have people at home who are immune compromised, or yourself, you're taking care of yourself, then we will also be doing Zoom. So you'll have two ways to join in every meeting, in person or via Zoom. Amen? All right. Amen. 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 God is providing. Yes, he is. Uh, October anniversaries, uh, Ryan and Rena Lake on the 4th, or that was today, 
Yeah. Michael yeah. and Nicole Molina on the 10th, and Clay and Morgan were then on the 27th. My family was busy in October. Yes, they are. All in October. Might as well. Might as well. <laughs> Steph Stephanie Noglia on the 1st, and actually Emil Ulrich was uh, on the 2nd. And then my Steve is on the 7th. Mm -hmm. Aiden Janice is on the 11th. I am on the 22nd. Sandy Korea is on the 28th, and John Lancaster is on the 31st. And if you want to let us know if we missed anybody. And then the Fireball Mendota UMC Annual Charge Conference is Thursday, November 12th, from 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. Now, the one thing, you can read the details, that's different this year, and this was a conference decision, not a local church decision is that this is not an all-church conference, which means everybody in the church is invited. This is a charge conference, which is effectively the church council, which is the, all the chairs of each committee and the pastor and the lay leader. So for uh, this year, for our charge conference, if you're part of church council, you will be invited and, and uh, expected to attend. And if you're not, then we will keep you updated on what happens. And the main reason is it's gonna be a very short, compact, conference and they just want to keep everything clean and concise. Um, so for those who are involved with that, put it on your calendars and everyone else will make sure you're up to date on, on what happens. Also the shoebox ministry is coming up so keep your eyes out and I did see that there were some shoeboxes already in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are having a student mis missionary fundraiser for Hannah. Um, Susan Janice is making stuffed shells. Uh, you're able to order them off of our uh, internet website. And of course, if you want to talk to one of us, that would be fine as well. And we are following COVID-19 guidelines. So, is that good? That's good. Perfect. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you all, especially those we haven't seen for a while. It's so good to welcome you all to church this morning. And I see Lupe and Adriana just <laughs> arrived. <laughs> welcome, welcome. It is indeed God who made this possible for all of us. In God's perfect time, he said, it's about time for us to come back here in the sanctuary to worship as a family and physically together again. It is indeed a brand new day, praise God for that. So for our worship, if you are able and willing, you may stand up for our centering hymn, or if you wanna just sit down, that's fine too. So for this worship, I just wanna say that sometimes it becomes hard to experience the reality of God in a song, especially when we sing the same songs over and over for so long, that we lose the freshness of our worship with Him. So as we sing this song, please consider this as our holy and mighty God reintroducing himself to us in a very fresh and personal way. Make this song as your heartfelt personal words to the God we worship this morning. Because he is here. He is saying, I want to meet with you. I want to hear you. I want to listen to your wholehearted worship.
Praise you, Lord. You are such a good, good God. Man, it is so good to see all the, the people we have been missing. I am so glad you are here. You have overjoyed your pastor. I'm just telling you so you know. All of you here today just brought so much joy into this pastor's heart. Whew, let us pray. Lord God, we thank you and praise you once again for this day to come back together to see people we've been missing within our church family, within our fellowship, Lord, and Lord, we just continue to pray that you open those doors for others, Lord, to come back, that you put it on those hearts, Lord, those who are able, Lord, and those who, Lord God, are capable of coming and being present within the body, within the cloud, of this great cloud of witnesses, Lord, we just ask you, your spirit convicts their spirit, Lord God, to testify to your grace and come out and loosen their tongues to speak to your glory. We continue to pray over them, Lord God, and we pray over those who are here today, Lord. Lord, we just invite you into this place because we know, Lord, these are difficult times. These are just difficult times, but this day makes us so much better, Lord. This day gives us new hope, new beginnings. We can see you at work, Lord. Even this day, we see you at work in our lives and in our community and in the church advancing your kingdom. So we thank you and we praise you. We praise you, Lord God. But we lift up our voices too. We gather together, Lord God, to lift up our prayers. Those things that we're struggling with, Lord, those doubts that have been plague in our minds or our hearts. We confess those to you, Lord, because we know that's the only way to give them up. That's the only way to let them go is to confess our doubts to you and the things, Lord, that are weighing heavy on our hearts, the people, Lord, that we're worried about, that we're caring about, that, Lord, we're looking for healing grace in their lives. We commit them to you, Lord. And, and also, Lord, we know that even in these times, your blessings have not decreased, Lord, but even your blessings have increased. So we thank you. We lift up praise and glory to you for all the blessings in our lives. And so it is now that I invite you who are here today to lift up your prayers, to lift up your joys and your concerns to our Lord or God. You can just shout them out. God will hear them, will hear them, and, uh, and we'll pray for them. So if you have any joys, any concerns today, please lift them up now. Dominic. Can we keep my, can we keep David Martinez in prayer? Yes, David in prayer. And, and who? Carl Martinez. Carl, yes, David and Carl. 
others. And we got a nice note from Linda Bershear, and she thanked us all for our prayers. She wrote her, I'm going to read it, C1, C2, and C3 spiral. And I can't read that next word, but anyway, she broke her neck, and she says that she's, she's been through lots of surgeries, but this is the most painful. But the doctors in the hospital, the three doctors in the hospital where she went were the best, and then she went into rehab where she had good treatment there. And she said she is so lucky to be alive and to not be paralyzed. And she watches our, your sermon, our church service, every Sunday on her phone. And she says she thoroughly, thoroughly appreciates it. But she wants to thank all of you for your prayers because she's deeply, deeply Catholic. Amen. Praise the Lord for answered prayers. I've never met Linda. But I've had the pleasure of connecting with her on Instagram, so we chat on Instagram every now and then. So thank you for that, that blessed report. And amen. Praise God. Other prayers? Yes. I have a concern to still keep my dad in prayer. Mm -hmm. He's, he says he takes two steps forward and three steps back. It mm -hmm. just seems like one thing after another. But his hip and knee are doing better, but he's got some other issues. He goes in for a biopsy on his right thyroid um, on the 13th. So we're a little concerned about that going on. And he went through pneumonia and in the hospital for weeks. So I said he's just been through a lot. So just please keep him in prayer um, for strength and for he's quite depressed. And so mm -hmm. that uh, is understandable what he's gone through. But Ted and I have joy. We're going to be grandparents any day Woo! now. <laughs> we're just waiting. Chad recording our view on the 6th. And so we're keeping our phones with us. And I apologize if on just in case we get any news, even though we can't be there in the hospital. Um, we don't know what we're having. They don't. They didn't want to know. They, they wanted to be surprised, so we're happy about that. But we got another. We're, we're going to be grandparents in January with Amy and Jacob. <laughs> Did I tell you the blessings are increasing? Yeah. <laughs> so we're excited. We are having a girl. They didn't want to find out what they were having, so we know we have a girl coming, but we're not sure about the other one. Amen. We're excited. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we'll keep Bill in our prayers. Praise the Lord for strengthening his back. And in his knees and for everything else, the Lord knows what's going on. We commit him to the healing grace and praise God for new life. Amen. I want to point out a couple things since it's been so long since we've been in here. Uh, before we shut down, we had all our plans for Easter laid out. And so we still have hanging in our sanctuary Easter banners. I think that's appropriate. It's still a season of Pentecost, so that's very appropriate. And, and we even had our palms for Palm Sunday. And I kept them. Not the full branches, but I kept the palms. Because I thought, you know, we can still live into that season of Easter and resurrection and Pentecost. Amen? Amen. So we have these things to remind us of where we left off, but we never stopped. We kept moving forward. Praise Amen. the Lord. Other prayers. Linda. Can we still continue to pray for Hazel? Um, she has got and lawyers. So, um, okay, for Hazel. Amen. Lord, we need her. She needs you, Lord. Okay. I have a call for my sister. Sue for her, her, her uh, healing uh, in her eye. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, one of my best friends, Marianne, he was just diagnosed with cancer and having surgery on Tuesday. Okay. At Stanford. At so so Marianne surgery on Tuesday. Yes, amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dominic. I would like to offer two more thoughts and prayers. For Dominic. Yes, you got it. Tara. Praise Lord for his healing grace in our lives and for more new life. This is church. I mean, this, these two should be full with all the babies. Come on. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> yeah, I want to give an update on Jad, but first I am just really reflecting of 2020. You know, it's been a 
difficult year for a lot of us, for the whole world even. But we can see that God never stopped working. Even when we don't see it and even when we don't feel it, he kept working. And we have blessings and answered prayers through all that we've been through and babies and new life and all of that. But anyway, even with Jad, you know, so she's in a transition place right now. Not really the, the place that they're going to because uh, before we knew that they were waiting for their visas. But remember, we had a National Day of Prayer, you know, last week, and we were praying for the whole world. So there were just signs in that prayers that gave hope and encouraged to me before I even had an opportunity to talk to Jad, before Jad called us to update us of what's happening. So there were, uh, like, prayers, specific prayers that they were saying that, you know, the prayers for, and if you remember in the news before, the pastor who had been in prison for a long time, before he was released, a lot of pray people were praying for him, and they believed that the prayer wasn't just for him, but for Turkey as well, because he was in, in prison. So they believed that something is going to happen to And then also there were other prayers that, will, that were specific for us. It, it said something like open doors, walls breaking down, and for me it just spoke to me, because, you know, we are thinking about this team that are still waiting for their open door for an opportunity for but anyway so as they're in this place you know where they are i'm i'm on the internet so i don't have to say the specific place for their own security so they were really like feeling somehow depressed in a way because they felt like they're not in the right place but then Jad, because her heart has, is already in that place because she's been to that place so she felt like it wasn't really it wasn't really good for their team to be divided in their heart to the place because even if this was a temporary place for them, she felt like God had something really powerful for them to do there. And uh, to make the long story short, they were studying the scriptures, they were reading through Acts, and then God spoke to them that they need to have repentance because their heart was not in the right place. Meaning that even if it's just a temporary place for them, they have to pour out everything there. They have to love the people there and they have to serve God wholeheartedly there too, even if it's just a... So after all that, after all their prayers, they were able to encounter five young women. Three of them attended their home church. So they were just so excited that with their turn of hearts, with their heart fully devoted to God, God suddenly gave them victory and fruit with their ministry. So they have three women attended the church and wanting to study the Bible and meet with them more often to know more about Jesus Christ. So they were so happy that they, they got this, you know, five women to, to disciple, you know, even as they're only staying there temporarily. And then before the, the weekend was over, so that was last weekend, they got a news that they already got their visa. So see, God really opened the door for them and they got their visa. So it's still partly good news because even if the visas are available, the place is still locked down because of their holidays. And of course, uh, it's part of the COVID lockdown as well. So they're still praying that up to October 10th, that they, there will be an opportunity for them to physically enter the, the place. So it's still partly a prayer request so let's continue to pray that God will really literally bring them to the place now that they have their visa so the visa is an answer prayer that God indeed so they said it was a miracle because the government was shut down so how was it how was the government able to work their visas out but in in the big picture God made it happen for them so that's the testimony they have three women committed to to know more about Jesus Christ and in that place before they go to the next place that they are really willing to go i mean hoping to go with their visas so yeah there you go amen <laughs> President and Julian and his family and the leadership of our country. Regina. I'd like to also keep my side of prayer. And uh, sure. he goes back to court for his day. And it's a good chance he could win his case if we Amen. decide to fight it. And uh, and also for my new door on my front door I got last Sunday after church. <laughs> um, and then Pastor and Joy came and anointed it on my name and prayed and things have been much better. It's looking up. Praise, Praise 
the Lord. Praise Amen. the Lord for Joshua and the work he's doing in his life and in yours. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for hearing our prayers, for hearing our cries, for hearing our jubilations, Lord, as we cry out and lift up and praise you, Lord God. All these things, all these words we lifted up, we lift up to you, Lord God. And yes, we continue to keep our president in our prayers, Lord, and his uh, wife, the, the First Lady, and uh, all their family, Lord God, as they're recovering from COVID and experiencing which, experiencing which so many have experienced, Lord. We continue to, to pray over all those, Lord, who are, are part of this electoral season, all those who are on the road and campaigning. Lord, we pray that you keep them in your care, that you keep them safe and protected and free, free from any virus or pandemic, Lord. We just pray over them and commit them to your loving care. We continue to pray for, Lord, a, a time of stillness. I think, Lord, in this, the middle of this elect, election season, in these last 30 days, Lord, we just pray that you will give us moments to be still and to be calm and to know you, Lord. Amen. Because we know certainly there will be a lot of highs and lows in the next 30 days. And Lord, the best thing we can do is rest in your presence and rest in your care. Amen. So Lord, I commit all the people of this nation to your love and care that they will find those moments of peace and clarity and comfort in you and through you and that your wisdom, Lord God, will work in them and through them as they, Lord, discern and pray on how you lead us into voting for those who you would call to lead us, whether it be in the presidency, whether it be in the Congress or the Senate, whether it be in our governors or our mayors, Lord, or even our local policies. We commit all these things to you, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God, that you're a part of that story. All these things, Lord, our nation, our leaders, our people, we commit to you for healing, for reconciliation, Lord, for new beginnings, Lord, for new beginnings, so for people to see afresh and in new ways. And then, Lord, begin to speak in new ways, speaking that brings healing and reconciliation into the lives of your people. It's all these things we commit to you, Lord God. It's all these things that we lift up to you in prayer. We pray all these things for our nation and for all the nations, Lord, as your people Pray the way your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Today's reading is Jeremiah 1, 4 through 12. What do you see? Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I sanctified you, and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go everywhere that I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform it. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians 2, 17, no, 17, 3, 13, Paul's desire to meet. As for us, brothers and sisters, when, for a short time, we were made orphans by being separated from you, in person, not in heart, we longed with great eagerness to see your face, to, to see you face to face. For we wanted to come to you, certainly I, Paul, wanted to again and again. But Satan blocked our way. For what is our hope or joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? Yes. You are our glory and joy. Therefore, when we could bear it no longer, we decided to be left alone in Athens. And we sent Timothy, our brother and co-worker for God, in proclaiming the gospel of Christ. 
to strengthen and encourage you for the sake of your faith, so that no one would be shaken by these per persecutions. Indeed, you yourself know that this is what we are destined for. In fact, when we were with you, we told you beforehand that we were to suffer persecution. So it turned out, as you know. For this reason, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that somehow the tempter had tempted you and that our labor had been in vain. But Timothy had just, has just now come to us from you and has brought us the good news of your faith and love. He has told us also that you always remember us kindly and long to see us, just as we long to see you. For this reason, brothers and sisters, during our distress and persecution, we have been encouraged about you, you through, faith, through your faith. For we now live, if you continue to stand firm in the Lord, how can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Would you be in prayer with me, please? Lord God, we've heard your word proclaimed, and we thank you because it is your word, Lord God, that, that sharpens our spirits, that divides that which is not of you and that which is you, Lord God. And Lord God, all we pray is that what is of you is what remains and everything else falls away. So let your word, Lord, separate all that that's not of you from us, from our beings, from our spirit, from our bodies in every way, Lord God. And as we hear this message today, Lord God, we pray that whatever you want us to hear individually, each one of us, let the Holy Spirit make that shine for us. Let it be lifted up for us and let our hearts and our spirits be convicted in your ways. We commit ourselves to you in this time, Lord God, and, and it is in this time that I pray that the words of my mouth will be acceptable to you, that the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. I remember when I, I first came to Fireball just a little more than a year ago. And uh, growing up in, in the Bay Area and then living in the Sacramento area and then up in Nevada City, I moved around and lived in urban areas, very urban areas and, and rural areas, but in the mountains and the Central Valley is its own thing. It really is. I've learned so much since I've been here. Our family has and we've learned a lot about many things including farming because we have a lot of farmers in our church and in our community and, and they've been teaching us so many things i mean even the first year we were here as we were came in, in the beginning of the harvest season that uh, we got to go out and visit the different farms and the different orchards and ranches and, and see how the different crops are harvested the cotton and the tomatoes and the uh, the almonds and and the pistachios. And, and I remember talking to one of the farmers and, and the pistachios on their farm is just, I, I don't know, there's something different about them. It's, it's like the nut is popping out of the shell. The meat is so thick and, and ripe. And I, I asked him, I said, I said, why is yours different? What are you doing that your fruit is healthier and more robust and, and your harvest are so bountiful? You know what he said to me? He said, well, I learned from my father-in-law. And what my father-in-law taught me, he said, it's very important that if you're going to be a farmer, you got to put your boots in the field. You can't be like these corporate farmers that have hired hands that go and tend to the fields on a minimal basis because we don't want to pay more than necessary. But when you own your own farm, it's different, right? You walk the farm. You walk the field. And you know the field. Right? You know your trees, and you know in what season they should look like, and, and what they should be bearing, and how many leaves 
or, or buds they should have on them or, or how much fruit they should have on them, right? Maybe even sometimes you, you kneel down and you pick up the dirt because you want to feel the consistency of the dirt or maybe you even smell it or taste it because but that'll tell you, right? That'll tell you if the soil's healthy and well or, or if maybe something's contaminated and got into the soil that, that might harm your farm or your ranch or your trees, right? And the water, too. You pay attention to the water. Is the water clear? Is it flowing well? Or is there things in the water that I, I need to tend to? And then, of course, there's all the creatures that wander around. Some of them we like and some of them aren't good, right? You've got to know the difference. But unless you put your boots in the field and you're out there daily walking around and observing all the activity that's happening, you might miss something. There might be a threat that comes in. Maybe it's, it's a, a, an insect, maybe it's, it's a disease, and they generally attack one tree first, right? And if we catch it quickly, we can extinguish the problem right away. When we're present, when we're practicing daily. And, and, and you know what I've come to believe? That these farmers, the ones who own their farms and are out there with their boots in, in the field every day, they, they have a relationship with their land. They have a relationship with their trees and their soil and their water, even to the point that when something is wrong, they can hear it crying out to them. Isn't that amazing? When we have that kind of relationship with God's good creation, that we can hear creation crying out to us, saying, tend to me, nurture me, care for me, and in return, I will bless you back ten times. 30 times, 100 times, right? Tenfold, 30-fold, 100-fold. Mm. That brings us to our first reading today in Jeremiah. And if you have your Bibles, and see, there's no Bibles in the pews because we can't have common touch items. So you've got to bring your Bibles. And I encourage you to do so because when we're hearing the Gospel read, it's helpful to follow along because sometimes we get distracted if we're just hearing and not seeing. So it's always good. And plus, it's good to follow along when the pastor's preaching. So I do encourage you to bring your Bibles. And then if you have your own Bibles, you can even mark them when the pastor's preaching. That's a good thing. You should see mine. It's, it's written in, drawn in, circles, lines, arrows, everything. You, you name it. So we're opening up to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1, the uh, verses we heard today. And I, and I gotta tell you, this, this, this gets me every time, this verse four. And we're just gonna spend a minute here, but I wanna highlight this. Verse four says, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Who is the word of the Lord? Do you know his name? Jesus. Jesus. He has a name, right? In John, the Gospel of John, chapter one, verse one, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. He never missed a beat in history. On every page in the Bible, you can find Jesus Christ, and we find him here. Now the word of the Lord Jesus Christ came to Jeremiah, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I knew you. And it's more than knowing the trees, as great as that is. He knows us deeply and intimately, even before, even before our conception. And at the point of conception, and every moment after until we're fully formed. And then we're going to jump ahead. We're going to jump up to, to verse 9 and 10. Verse 9 says, Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. I don't know about you, but I've often struggled with those verses. And Jeremiah is my favorite prophet. I love Jeremiah and I encourage you to read him. But it's not always a feel-good book, if you know what I mean. The, the tearing up and the pulling down, the uprooting. But you know what that reminded me of? 
And I've seen it last year, and I've even seen it this year, because there comes a point with every crop that it's reached its life. Right? Almond trees, pistachio trees, they have a life. When they get to a certain age, and the yield starts going down. So at a certain point, a farmer might decide, well, this, this crop has blessed me for, for many years, many decades, maybe it is, but now it's time to plant something new. Maybe they're going to replant almonds. Maybe they're going to uproot almonds and plant pistachios. But they're doing it because the yield is not there. Sometimes they do it because there's a, a, another crop that might be more fruitful, right? That might be more bountiful, well, financially for no other reason, but that's fine. God expects us to invest what he gives us with what we have. So whether we're tearing up one thing to put in something that's going to bear more fruit for our families and for our community, or because it's no longer bearing fruit like it used to do, we tear it all up. And it's quite a sight, isn't it, to see all those big trees torn up and then stacked in the fields until they get real nice and dry and tender, and then they set them on fire, and then what happens? It turns to ash and becomes part of the soil again and nurtures, it nurtures the next crops that will be planted, right? What an amazing thing to see that. And that's what same thing God's saying to Jeremiah. We need to be willing to pluck up, to pull down, to destroy, and to overthrow in order, in order that we can start anew to build and to plant. And, and, and in this case, God was raising up Jeremiah for a very specific purpose. I'm going to tell you, Babylonians were coming. This is right before the Babylonians were coming from the north down to the south where they were going to conquer Jerusalem. I mean, we're just months away when Jeremiah is preaching this. And that's what the, the goes on to say. Trouble's coming. We need to turn back to God now or it's going to be too late. Mm -hmm. So God raised up prophets in the Old Testament to declare, to declare God's truth and promises to the nations and to the rulers of the nations. Right? If you're a prophet in the Old Testament, you went right to the king. Didn't you? Even if you wanted to behead you. Talk to Elijah. He had to go face Ahab, and he was not happy about it. But you know what? In the New Testament, God raised up his church to do the same. We're, as a church, the ones expected to speak to the things in our lives, in our communities, in our society, which is not healthy. The things which aren't bearing fruit. The things that are causing harm. I'm not talking about political things. This has nothing to do with politics. I'm talking about life. Are the people in your community thriving? Are the young people growing up in faith? Do they know Christ? Are they being raised in, in knowing Jesus and our Heavenly Father and, and the, the work and the power of the Holy Spirit? Or have they been, have they been forgotten? And no longer hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. How healthy is our community? Is the soil healthy to nurture and grow our, our youth and our young adults and, and even new believers? We got new believers who might be 70 years old coming in and they need to be nurtured and tendered and planted into good soil. Is our soil ready? Is it prepared to receive new believers and to nurture them and encourage them in the faith? When we see that something is unhealthy or causing harm within our community, whether it's Fireball, whether it's California, whether it's the United States or the whole world, we need to speak up. John Wesley said, avoid evil. Do good whenever you can. If you're put into a place or a position where you can do good, for some of us, that's here in town. We can drive significant change. There's people in this town who fight for the whole state. I've met some of them, some farmers who, who do work in politics because they want to make sure everything's working well, and God blesses it. And so we, we turn to these things, and we take responsibility for it, and then there's some who, who step up on the world platform, too. But most of us, most of us need to focus on our own community, our own church, our own family. That's where we can do the most good, amen? Amen. Amen. In verse 11, 12, it says again, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? 
And Jeremiah said, I see a branch of an almond tree. And then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. And it said, when I was going through and doing my studying, I realized it says in ancient Israel, the almond tree was the first tree to bud in the spring. I think it's true here too, isn't it? But I remember this past May, man, when those almond trees blossomed, it was beautiful. It lasted only about five or seven days, but they all blossomed at the same time. Man, it was breathtaking. Amen? Amen? And so when we see these signs in ancient Israel, I think just as much today, the first tree to bud in spring, the almond tree, then there's two things that we can take out of this scripture for our own lives. And the first is that the word of the Lord spoken through Jeremiah would be fulfilled rapidly. If the Lord speaks something to, to you in your heart and the Holy Spirit convicts it, you can expect it to happen Amen. rapidly. Amen. But only if you react to it. Oftentimes the Holy Spirit says something to it and we say, that's nice. Or, hmm, was that you? I don't know. But when we learn his voice and he speaks to us and we react to it, then everything changes. Everything changes. Everything begins to happen and to be fulfilled rapidly. And number two, the people would recognize that God was alive and guiding the course of history to fulfill his promises. Because I'm going to tell you, every promise of God that he made in this book has been fulfilled. There's still that are going to be fulfilled, continue to be fulfilled, but none have gone unfulfilled. Amen. 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 A promise of God is solid. You can Amen. trust it, rely on it, stand on it, and you will never fail. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what do you see? What do you see in these times? Do you see a sense of urgency? Do you see a sense of urgency in these times to call God's people back to church? In obedience and discipline in order that the church once again might be effective in sharing the hope and love of Jesus Christ with the unbelievers? Because here's, here's what your pastor is pleading for, is, is presence. His presence. For your sake and for the sake of the church, for the sake of the community, and for the, the sake of the world. Joy was sharing a little bit of, of her experience with, with our student missionary, with our daughter, and her experiences. And we got the chance last week to talk to her. She was so excited. She was just overflowing. The testimony she shared, oh, she was overflowing with so much joy. But a couple of weeks earlier, her heart was breaking. Because they knew, they knew the times were different. They knew with COVID that their plans may not work out the way they had planned it. This is her fourth missionary journey, and she had her heart set on a country where she's been twice before. She's only 19, and she's been in the Middle East. This is her fourth missionary journey there. And, and she had her heart set on this one country where, where God has placed their people, where she's learned the language, where last year she spent two months, and then it came back and, and, and said, no, no, that, that's not open. That door's not open. So God opened another door to another nation. And she accepted that with joy. But she grieved a little bit for her people. Because she knew she would miss it. Just like Paul in his letter in 1 Thessalonians was missing the people in Thessalonica and their presence. And he just longed to see them. She was longing to see the people in this nation. And so, she, but she's okay with it. But then things changed again. If you read Acts chapter 16, you see this. Paul and, Barnett, or Paul and Silas wanted to go to Asia, and the Holy Spirit said, no, go left, not right. And then they wanted to go a different direction. He said, no, go here. And that's the way the Holy Spirit works. And when we're obedient, then God is glorified and his work is done. So we trust that God is always leading us wherever they end up. They trust that God had led them there. But there was a problem. There's six of them in this team, six young women who have given up a year of their life to go to the Middle East to share the gospel with people who've never heard it, who've never heard the word, and where it's not accessible. So if someone speaks Jesus' name to you, you may never have another chance to hear it again. So those who have ears to listen and eyes to see, yes, I want to hear more, because in these nations, you can't just go down to the street and go to church. You can't just turn on the TV or the radio and hear the gospel. It doesn't work that way like we have it here. And so they weren't allowed to go to her nation of choice. They were going to another nation, but the border was closed. They were waiting for their visas. 
So they said, well, we're going to the Middle East and we're going to waylay. We're going to waylay for a few weeks in another nation. It's my daughter's nation, our daughter's nation. She was so happy. As soon as she got the word before she even left Portland, she knew where she was going and she knew she'd only be there for a matter of weeks, but she was beaming and she was so joyful that she would get to see her people, speak their language, share the gospel. But then she arrived there with her team and they started speaking things. And you know the tongue, the tongue can, can kill things. Simple words can kill spirits and joy and passion. So she was so excited to go hit the streets for the, however many days or weeks they would have in this nation. And her team kept saying to her things like, well, we don't want to be here, but it's okay because God's going to open the door quickly. We won't be here long. Or, I feel like we're in prison and we're just trapped and we can't do anything. And her daughter's heart broke. Because she realized her heart was for the people where they were and nobody else's wasn't. She realized that unless all their hearts were of the same, unless their minds were the same, like the same, thinking the same way, they would have no effect on their ministry where they were. And they did it. And after so many days of our daughter grieving, she sat down with her team and she confessed. She said, I need to confess, my heart is breaking because I love these people. But your heart isn't with my heart. We're not being affected. Jesus isn't being glorified. And so as Troy said, they opened up their Bibles and they searched the scriptures. They let the word of God correct their heart. They repented, they confessed. They confessed, and they were forgiven, and then they went out and met five young women. Five beautiful young women, three of which who showed up to church on Sunday, two who called and said, we want to come, but we can't make it. So praise, praise the Lord. Hopefully pray that they made it this Sunday. And then those same other women who were complaining because they felt like they were in prison, their hearts were set on fire, and they started praying for God to give them more days. Don't send us yet, Lord. We want more days here for these people. Their hearts came alive, and the people came alive with them. Filled with hope and promises and life. You know that gleam in a person's eye when they get a new hope? You can see it a mile away. What a sight. How I long to see that gleam in the eyes of the people in our community. Those who've been lost. Those who've been forgotten. Those who nobody is telling them that Jesus loves them. When's the last time you told your child Jesus loves them? Or your grandchild? or your niece, or your nephew. Don't receive it. Just, I love you, but Jesus loves you too. They need to hear it now more than ever. In this time, more than ever, our children, our youth, and even our young adults need to know that Jesus loves them, need to be reminded. They know it. Oh, they didn't know it. How many times have I told them? They need to be reminded. They need to be reminded. Let's take a quick look at uh, First Thessalonians. Oh, I'm sorry, Philippians. You can go here if you want. It's in your going deeper section. Philippians chapter two, verses one to eleven. We're just going to look at verses one and two. It says, "If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion, sympathy." Make my joy complete, be of the same mind, the same love, being in full accord with one. and of one mind. Be like-minded. If we, as a church, are not one of one mind in Christ, we will not be effective in sharing the gospel or discipling Christians in our church. And so your pastor's inviting you now. Beginning today, I see 
an almond branch, and it's blooming. And God's going to act upon his word, and he's going to act upon his promises in an expedited way. But I need you to partner with me in prayer, in prayer, in praying for, for this church, this congregation, this community to once again come alive in Christ and get a sense of urgency and see, see the well-being of our community. Are our trees growing up healthy? Is the soil rich and healthy? How's the water? How's the air? How are all the creatures in the field? We need to be paying attention. Because I'm going to tell you, if we tend the soil and come into relationship with the trees in our community, you will see God working in new ways that you've never seen before. That's your pastor's promise to you, and it comes with assurance because it's God's promise for us. Amen? Amen. One last thing. Again, this is in your going deeper, Hebrews 12, verses 22 to 29. We're just going to look at verses 26 and 27. Verse 26. At that time, his voice shook the earth. And now he has promised yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase yet once more indicates the removal of what, the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. And awe. For indeed, our God is a consuming fire. Have you felt the shaking? Last seven months, have you felt the shaking? Are you allowing it to shake yourself and shake those things that aren't from God out of your lives and commit more to the things that God is calling you into? If we're not surrounding ourselves every day with the word of God, how are we going to share that hope with other people? If we're not praying daily for ourselves, our family, our communities, and for God's kingdom, how will it ever take effect? God intervenes when we call upon him individually and as a community. And why it's so important to be present on Sundays, because when we're not here on Sundays, we give permission to other people not to be here on Sundays, and specifically youth and even young adults. I realized something, now my kids are in their 20s. They watch me just as carefully as when they were this tall. You know how kids are, they watch every move you make. That doesn't stop when they're 20 or 30 or 40. If you have kids who are 35 and 40, and maybe you say, well, for me, church once or twice a month is good. I'm, I'm good and I have my other spiritual practices. But guess what? People are paying attention and maybe they need four days a month in church. You may not, but maybe they do. But they're seeing an example set, and if it's okay for mom and dad or grandma and grandpa or my aunts and uncles, my friends, it's okay for me. I'll go just when I feel like it, not admitting that we have a need for a risen Savior. So pray with me. Pray. If, if, if you find trouble finding the desire and the passion to come to church every Sunday, then pray for that. Pray for the desire. And pray for your children's desire and your grandchildren. By name, it works. It has effect. I promise. Now, again, we're in a pandemic. If people are immune compromised, if you're a caretaker for somebody who's immune compromised, if you're living with somebody who's immune compromised, and that's why you're not coming to church on Sunday, then praise you. You're doing the right thing. But if you're not coming because you don't want to wear a mask in church? Really? Jesus died on a cross for us? And we're complaining because of the discomfort of a mask. Cross, mask. I think we can bear it. 
And, and you will bring your pastor tremendous joy when he sees your face. And even more if it's for the first time. Come to church. Come and be healed. Come and be equipped to advance the kingdom of God. So, take away. Here are three points. One, continual presence is required in order to have effect in anything in life. For church to be church, we must be of one mind and, and of one heart. And as a church, we need to pray for that. Lord, let us all be of one mind and one heart. That should be part of your prayers daily. And three, the time is urgent, mostly for our youth and our young adults. Remember to tell them, Jesus loves them. Amen? Amen. Thank you for that reminder from the word that God has broken a new day for us. God has broken a new morning for us. This is a new start. This is a new beginning. God is planting an almond branch. And it's about to sprout and it's about to blossom and there is a great harvest ahead. So he's calling for boots in the field. And may we respond to that to align ourselves to the calling of God in our lives. So I invite everyone to stand up to sing our final hymn, if you're willing and able, our morning has broken. Go ahead.
comfortable standing, you may sit down. If you're comfortable sitting down. Did everybody get their communion cups? Okay, good. communion cups and if you're going to be worshiping at home then, then you can use any element you like you have bread you have crackers you have apple juice you have grape juice that's fine take time and prepare it and for those who are with us today you'll notice your communion cup has two layers the first layer is a thin layer which contains your wafer so you can loosen that now and have it ready and then the second layer is the cup of the vine and your communion, order for communion, is in your bulletin. Let's be in a way of prayer. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and our praise. It's right and good. Yes, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> It is right, O oh Lord God, and good, and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. It was in the beginning, Father, that your spirit moved over the face of the waters, and you formed us in your image and breathed into us your breath of life. Lord, when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so, Lord God, with your people here on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full, full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. The highest. Blessed, Blessed is, is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. highest. Yes, Lord, holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. For it was at his baptism in the Jordan that your Spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved Son. And with your Spirit upon him, he turned away the temptations of sin. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Father God, he, he healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with the sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and by the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, baptizing us with your Holy Spirit and with fire as on that day of Pentecost. And then on that night, on that night in which he gave himself up for us, he, he took the bread and, and he had given it to you and, and he broke the bread and, and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he had taken the cup and he gave thanks to you, Father Almighty, and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it remembrance of me. And on that day, you raised him from the dead. He was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and in the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy, a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. 
Christ, Christ has is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. I ask you now to hold the elements in your hand as I bless them. Lord God, we pray now for you to pour out your Holy Spirit on all your people gathered here, gathered in their homes, wherever they may be. And pour out, Lord God, your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them for us, Father God, to be the body and the blood of Jesus Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gifts of the Spirit. By your Spirit, Father God, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit of your holy church, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And all the people said, Amen. 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 Now I invite you to eat of the bread. And to drink of the cup. to give thanks to you, Lord your God. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your Eucharist. We thank you for your presence, for your Holy Spirit, for your dwelling within us, for your leading us, for your guiding us, for your renewing us and restoring us, building us up and equipping us, Lord, to do your work. We thank you. We praise you and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And now I'd like to invite my wife up to lead us in our closing prayer. I don't have that one, but I'll get you this one. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are reminded always of your life, death, and resurrection as we celebrate communion today. Thank you that we are reminded of the greatest gift we have ever received, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of eternal life and salvation through Jesus Christ. And because he is alive in us, there's living hope that is growing inside of us that builds us up and gives us this new day, Lord Jesus. Lord, with your gift of life, we pray that we are able to give back our lives to you as our living sacrifice, as our act of worship, Lord. We pray that you will find us worthy to be your boots in the field, Lord God, to be your laborers in the vineyard, Lord Jesus, to help you in the harvest field, O oh God. Lord, make us worthy. Holy Spirit, cleanse us, empower us, and renew us every day that we might be able to obey and fully commit our lives in obedience of the call of God in us. Lord, it is our prayer that today, as we leave this place, that you have changed us anew. You have given us a new vision for this new season, O oh God, and that we will never be the same. We will not look back, but look only to the future that you have for us. Look only to you, Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, Lord God. Lord, thank you for this brand new week that you have given us. I pray, Lord God, that you will continue to center us in you and continue to lead us into the fields that you are opening up for us and you are leading us into. We give you all the glory and praise for what you have done this morning in us and through us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Now, as we leave today, I will ask those who are in the rear to, to exit and at least clear the area first. So as we exit today, we can minimize the cross. We'll just an extra little care, touch, and love that we do. And you'll notice two things on your way out. You'll notice an offering plate by the door. That's where you can leave your offering for the Lord to advance his kingdom. You'll also notice a little red and green basket. Do you know what that's for? Coins. Quarters. Quarters. Any quarters you put in there, we will make sure to get into the tube as we once again begin refilling our quarter tube and all the quarters that go into this tube go to missions. Amen? Amen. Amen. Have a so let me uh, 
Let me bless the offerings before you leave and bless you, and I'll send you on your way. So, Lord God, I thank you and I praise you for this body. Those who are here, those who are online, those who are praying for this church, Lord God, we thank you, thank you and praise you for them, Lord God. Lord God, I ask you to bless those who are giving offerings today, Lord, that you bless them. Bless the offerings that are given, Lord, and use those, those givings, those offerings to advance your kingdom, Lord. Lord God, use them for your glory, to reach the lost and the forsaken, those who have been forgotten, Lord. Use them, Lord God, to grow your church. Lord, we commit all these things to you, Lord God. Those who have given the offerings, Lord, and for those whom they're given, Lord, we commit them all to your loving care. And so it is, as we go out to this, this day, let, let us remember who's in charge. For it is our Lord and our God who is sovereign over all things. And if you're worried, don't worry. He's in control. Lean into him. Trust in him. And as you go out this day, as you go out this week, go out and serve him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Go out and serve our, serve our Lord, our God. Go out today. Go in peace. Amen.